Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, Americans and people abroad, welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, the most fun that you all have on a political podcast. This week we're doing a special edition, The Brutal Rant. We get whatever is on our chest, off our chest, is less of a uh, agenda or structure, stuff we got to talk about that may be getting on our nerves or that nobody is saying, no matter how big or small. So I am Elmo the conservative, but I'm just a co-pilot. Pilot, are you in the house? Tell me. Oh, I'm in the house. Uh oh, we're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that's flying this thing at thirty-five thousand feet. Uh oh, <laughs> we're not gonna crash yet. <laughs> not yet. No. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, wow. you know, I saw you land land that plane that time with no landing gear. So y- you got it. You got it under control. <laughs> got it under control. All right. Well, yeah, we're just going to rant about a couple of things today. Just a couple. Um, Just a couple. (laughs) Just a few. (laughs) One of America's newest federal holidays that's been around since 1865, but just got discovered in the last couple of years. Um, And that one is Juneteenth. Yeah, I wonder if they was having food fights over at Ikea this year. You remember what happened last year when uh, they put... Uh, barbecue pork and chitlins on the menu and watermelon and people didn't like that. That's true. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> uh, what better way to show that you're not <laughs> being a bunch of black happy. folks got together, just decided to leave work in the middle of the day. You know, that's that's what you got. You creating a entitlement uh privilege type of attitude. That's true. And, and separation. It's just more separation. We're, we're Americans. And, you know, they when I know when I was coming up, probably when you were coming up as well, you know, we're Americans. But now as we go on and on, we've separated. Everybody has to have their own month. You can't get through the first six months of the year without having to recognize some demographic. Juneteenth is when the slaves finally got notified that they were free. And it took from from what I understand, it took a while for the slaves, for the word to get around, obviously. Um, I've heard some places two years. I've heard some places three years. So um, that's what we're celebrating today. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, the Italian people are celebrating, the Jewish people are celebrating. You know, I don't what's their thing um you know. yeah especially if they just got to this country as a fresh immigrant and they see all this going on they're like what what is this and and what do we need to do exactly exactly it's like we we're all these set asides we're now we're not um what is it now we're italian american we're um, asian american we're pacific islander we're this we're that we're african american we're this I mean, why can't we just be americans <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then let the identity come to the individual, not to a group. Right, right. Exactly. You know, you, you don't want stereotypes. You don't want to be classified together and someone to treat you or assume that you are like someone else in the group. Um, just with Juneteenth as one example, you can have a million people that are celebrating that, but they have uh, a million different ideals. And many, many things that within that group they disagree on. Exactly. Exactly. I now, just, I mean, mm-hmm. people people have the right to celebrate and do whatever they want. You know, uh, I don't know. Next year, maybe everybody's birthday is going to become a national holiday. And hey. then we'll end up working six days out of the year, you know, because of that. <laughs> exactly. Right. So let, let, me, let me celebrate what I want to do. On my own, I mean, I've seen Muslims like come to work and practice Ramadan with uh, laying down their mat and getting on their knees or fasting or, or whatever they're doing. You know, they may they may wear something different or different colors. So 
that's that's fine. And I guess a company should allow that as long as people are able to still do their job. Yes. But, you know, I, I don't know who pushed this or who pulled it through and, and made it happen. I, I guess when when election time comes around, the politicians to start saying, remember me, I'm the one I made this happen. Then we'll, we'll find out that way because it's all in a in a return for a vote or to get reelected. Exactly. Exactly. And this is, again, the, the height of pandering. You had, um, what was it, like you were talking about Ikea, you had Walmart doing the, oh, yeah. showing the African colors, the Juneteenth thing. And it, it's just, <laughs> it's just too much. Yeah. And with the, with the Pride Month thing, I've never seen so many stuff, so much painted Skittle colors. I mean, Xbox controllers, stop signs, crosswalks. You know, who who owns the copyright to the rainbow in the sky now? Does anybody own that? Every time a rainbow was formed, does someone get a dollar? Right. Okay. You know? Who does that belong to? It's, <laughs> you know, all these folks sitting here. I think I want to say there was a quote by, and I can't remember the exact words, and I can't remember who said it. But something to the effect that once the slaves were notified that they were free, there was elation, there was joy, there was all of this. And then the weight of now they're responsible for their own future. They're responsible mm -hmm. for everything that happens from this point on. And that that feeling of it was kind of like a burden came upon them. But it was someone that said it back during those times. It's like he had he saw that you know the slaves were free and they were you know they he was this was his first person account of kind of all that he saw as they got their freedom mm -hmm. so it went from elation to kind of a burden that now they're responsible for themselves this pride month and and juneteenth and all that sort of stuff and i say for the black folks that are just all into the tribalism um for lack of a better word um, into the Juneteenth thing and all that sort of stuff. And just think about the companies that didn't change their logos <laughs> Yeah, for Black History Month and for Juneteenth and for all of this. You know, all these companies, if you go on Facebook, they've got the, the pride colors. Right. And they're, you know, it's up there all month. And it's, as soon as June 1st hits, it's shoved into folks' faces. Um, all yeah. of Facebook and, you know, these black folks going along with all that. Just 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 think about this. Just sit back and think. Just look and, and just, you know, um, contemplate what you see. <laughs> I guess this is uh, a good time to bring up Booty Judge because I was curious about his whereabouts during the supply chain and the press secretary talking about how Things are not able to get out to where they need to get to. And we're running low on baby formula and shelves aren't able to be stocked. This guy is the secretary of transportation. And again, he's missing in action. Right. So it, it made me wonder, you know, was he was he at the pride parade? You know, who's watching the, the kids between him and his boyfriend when they're supposed to be held accountable and you are the number one dude. You are at the top for everything related to transportation. Yes. All right. And and if the price of gas is so high that it's affecting transportation to a detriment, then have the balls to say something. That might be too Please. great of a feat to expect. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, no, he's too busy touting his electric vehicle that he that he owns. Oh, is he on the Tesla? No, it's a Ford. It's a Ford EV. And he was telling everybody, you know, like you said, gas is so expensive. So why don't you just go out and get an electric vehicle for 40, 48 or $60,000 oh, and save on gas? Yeah. 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 That's, that's his, that's his solution. Well, uh, booty judge, I had to drain my savings fund just to fill up my tank. So, you know, purchasing that new vehicle, that's not going to be an option right now. <laughs> right. Let him know. Let him know. Because apparently, you know, that's that's their solution. These fossil fuels are just so darn too much. You're just ruining the environment by not going into $60,000 worth of debt to get a car. They're just ruining the environment. So what's the more important to you, the environment 
or <laughs> your pocketbook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. And then, as I had said once before, if people want to, if you really want to get to the truth and tell people what is good for them or what's bad for them, do an analysis of the the cities or the communities where people are not living long or their their uh, life expectancy is cut short and see what big a part pollution plays in that because all all big cities got people that are living into their 80s or longer and they have pollution uh, they they have gas powered vehicles gas powered lawnmowers and all this other stuff around to, to say you want to be healthy, you want to be clean. Well, what is the result that you want? What do you think? What do you think this is going to do? Or maybe they can get a isolated temporary sandbox city like Chaz or Chop, where they have everybody in there only owns electric vehicles. Let's get a uh, 10 square miles where people only own electric vehicles. And let's let's let them be an experiment and see how it affects affects their health. That's what it's supposed to come down to is, well, well, I don't know. I don't know. You got people that they, they care more about animals and trees and the birds than they do about the health of humans. So exactly. when it say the environment, I'm not even sure that that's for us. That may be, you know, preserving uh, thousands of acres in Alaska and things like that. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. When, when they're talking about that, yeah. Who is it for? And I question if it's for us, uh, you know, because they're they're telling us we're being so awful and, you know, going back and they're, they'll they believe if a bird is born in the forest. Oh, that's life. We've got to save the bird or save the the mm. dart fish in in San Francisco <laughs> or California or whatever. But if it's a kid, uh, no, don't want any parts of that. Yeah. So, again, in climate change and people, the people that are yelling climate change and telling you to get an electric vehicle or get a bike and go to work or telling you to turn your AC up to 85 degrees or whatever. Um, mm. These are the same ones who have several homes, three or four jets, um, you know, burning all kinds of electricity and utilities to stay cool, um, that sort of thing. So they are being hypocrites. <laughs> they're yeah. they're alarming you and telling you to do all these things while they're the same ones who are enjoying the sweet life. <laughs> well, for for Biden or anyone else who flies on Air Force One to say pollution from fumes and jet fuels is terrible, is killing the environment. Now, excuse me, I have to get on this uh, ten ton aircraft that's going to spew out uh, you know billows of <laughs> smoke and. And and uh, uh, chokeable fumes while I go up into the air. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, it's it's uh, hypocritical again. But it's it's really it's really like this pristine picture that somebody tried to create of how it can make us closer to a paradise or a utopia. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a misconception. You exactly. can't. You just can't do it. You can't do it. And we, we think that if we do this thing or that thing, that we'll be a little bit closer to heaven on earth. And it's a lie. It is. It is. And in the, in the quote unquote utopia they're trying to create, well, whose utopia? What, oh, if, yeah. I, what if I don't believe their utopia <laughs> is my utopia? Then right. now I'm suddenly at odds. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's, 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 it's just ridiculous. Instead of just leaving people alone, and letting them be and, and um, you know, finding their way and that sort of thing. They want to engineer and direct everything. And they want to direct it to what they think it should be. Not necessarily what you think it should be or what I think it should be. Or, mm -hmm. you know, a random person on the street think it should be. They're, they're, um, they have the mentality of Hillary Clinton and she has the mentality of them. She's part of them. But they're the ones who they know what's best for you. They don't yeah, even right. know you exist. They don't know you breathe, but they think they know what's best for you. They sure do. The pompousness and mm -hmm. arrogance and audacity. And uh, who who said that? Was it uh, Cuomo? Was it? Um, no, it was uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg said something like, we don't need to cut taxes and have 
let people have more money in their pocket because they don't know what to do with it. Wow. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's a that's a whole another story uh, where you got you got some people that are irresponsible and some uh, they know how to manage money very well. But you're putting you're putting people in a group. You're putting them together in a group because some people that are uh, poor, struggling, they used to be well off or they used to be doing well. And they are just now at a time when they don't have much money coming in. But they may be very educated about finance and budgeting and how to manage their money. I mean, he made his millions and he's a smart guy. But assuming that the the rest of the masses, no one can ever achieve the status or get to the place of the pedestal, which I have climbed up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So hmm, it's funny how that works. You don't lower taxes. So people don't have more money in their pockets. But by you raising taxes, I and the government get more money. Love how that works. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't know when people are going to get enough. It seems like they're kind of getting enough now. They're kind of yeah. getting fed up a little bit because they're paying more for everything. And they're right. noticing it. It's not like the gas went from maybe 225 to 250 it's mm-hmm. gone from two twenty five to four sixty nine, in some places seven dollars a gallon. Yeah. So, is folks are really feeling it? They're having to pay more yeah. at the at the grocery store. Farmers are having to pay yeah. more to just get the to get the food to us and to process it and to get it into the grocery stores. You know, diesel is going up. Diesel costs a lot, but you need diesel for the trucks to get the supplies to the grocery stores and the, and the places where it needs to go. So it's, it's happening all the way down the supply up and down the supply chain. Yeah. People in California, they're thinking about moving to places where the gas is only $5 a gallon. (laughs) Yeah. And the people where it's $5 a gallon, we're like about to (laughs) <laughs> march down, march with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> and, and like there's a there's a Frankenstein in town and we need to get him. Right. And Californians are like, oh, only five dollars, let's move. <laughs> so now you know uh Cam Cam, also known as Kamala Harris, <laughs> that uh she has a, a special term and nickname for her husband. Do you remember what she called him? You know, what, what this guy's official title is? The first or the second gentleman? The second gentleman. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not to be confused with the distinguished gentleman. Yeah. Like, I don't know who's making this up. So uh, what was the official name of Mike Pence's wife? Um, I think it was the second lady. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. See, yeah. I, just, I just learned that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay, okay, I see now. Yeah. I see. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies right? And gentlemen. Yeah, right. but but Mrs. Pence was far more intelligent than <laughs> what we have in there now. <laughs> and that that spouse, that spouse to the vice president, they don't have political power, right? And they they were not sworn in like the vice president was. True. Sure. And, you know, he's he stayed quiet for most of the time. So I don't really have a, a problem with him. But, uh, you know, at the time when she first got in office, she was calling him the the second sweetie and all of this stuff. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous stuff. It is. And, you know, she's going to start that disinformation board again. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, and there folks- was a, oh. there was a disinformation czar at some yes. point that that Biden had appointed and put together this team. So is this is this the same thing or is some different? It's the same thing where the government is going to tell you what's true and what isn't. But that's what they call and they're going to call it disinformation board and she's in charge of it. So huh, that's appropriate. She, that's it's appropriate, but folks are getting all up in arms and it's like y'all don't worry about it. <laughs> Remember she was supposed to take care of the border as well and you see how uh-huh. that's going. So she's not going to do anything. You know. So we can go from she doesn't do anything. We'll go from calling her Cam Cam to Miss Miss. Yeah. Miss information. Miss information. Because she's not going to do anything. What does she do? 
<laughs> what she doesn't do anything. Well, they they got her in a stable, you know. They got her in a, a confined in a barn, saying Wait. we're we're controlling where you go and what you do, just like the border. I don't think they let her go to the border. No, just like it. just like uh, Biden has a list of things that he's allowed to talk about. So right. we're controlling his mouth, which is a spokesperson for his brain, and com- <laughs> controlling. Cam Cam's whereabouts and where she goes. Exactly. But like you said, they probably got her in a stable in a barn somewhere. Um, just holding her back until they 25th Amendment him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's he's falling off of not a moving bikes, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sitting bikes. You know, still oh, bikes. Oh, my goodness. Falling off of. I heard about that. I thought I thought the bike was at least going one mile an hour when he fell off. <laughs> no, this is he stopped, put both feet on the ground, and before he could extend the kickstand, timber, bam. <laughs> yes. I, I guess the only reason he got out there is his administration trying to show the world that he's uh, physically fit or that he's in good enough shape to be in charge and run the country. The, yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> I mean, really, the, the bike wasn't moving. So it makes sense that they would put some training wheels on the bike. But the optics of that, that that may not look good for campaign and, and reelection. You know, oh, well, you know, the, all the um, all the competitor has to do, whoever that's going to be on either side, Democrat or Republican. All they got to do is show him falling down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, hopefully they'll put that in the reel. <laughs> you remember how Trump, he had the the Democrat politician speaking and the green screen background was the rioting and the stuff burning? Yes. yes. It's mostly peaceful protests. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. they. I'm sure they'll show that among other things. But they could put the the different colored rainbow streamers streamers into the handlebars, and that would distract people from the training wheels. That, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, speaking of queens, because <laughs> Kamala, she's the black queen now. She's wearing wearing the crown, second in charge only to the president. Oh boy. I mean, there, there's a heat wave that's going on, not just in the United States, but many parts of the world are being hit with very high temperatures. Yes. And, and including in England, in London, right? Yes. So mm-hmm. I saw this thing outside of Queen Elizabeth's palace or fortress or whatever it is. You see these guards with the colonial red coats and wearing the big furry Russian, uh, uh, Russian helmets. You know, uh-huh. the, the big black hats, the, the guards to the uh, to the palace, they're they're lined up there. And then one of the guards, he just passes out. Oh, you know, he just falls flat out face down and they had to come and put him on a stretcher and carry him out there. Oh, right. So uh-huh. it's, it's hot over there, like near 100 degrees. And these guys are wearing these these tight, hot coats that they got to have buttoned up to their collar because. You can't be out of uniform. We can't leave one button undone. So they're wearing these, mm-hmm. these hot coats. And then, I mean, stick a thermometer in those fur hats. You know, three foot tall hats, bigger than a beehive. I hate to think what the temperature is in there. So mm-hmm. these guys are getting heat strokes, standing out there trying to defend a woman that has no political power. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm yep. telling you, it, it looked like an army. It was like at least a hundred guards. Like is uh, Black Ops and the SEAL Team Six trying to break into your palace and get to your your jewelry and your your artifacts that hard? That you need <laughs> these guys standing out there in formation. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I thought it was primarily for show, and people go there and they visit the the Queen's Castle or Buckingham Palace. And you see a couple of guards. So I thought that's all they had. The they got a whole platoon. I'm telling you, like, like, why is there so many of them? You know, organizing out there in the uh, you know, in the square, like the uh courtyard or yeah, the courtyard, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, organizing out there in formation 
like you you're gonna start uh, marching into battle with your bayonet guns. Wow. Because people are people's health is is in danger. Yes, maybe switch them out more often, or yeah. let them wear um, not such heavy outfits or uniforms or something. Because that's deadly. That is absolutely yeah. deadly. Yeah, and Queen Elizabeth, she's nowhere to be found. You know, she's on the inside, chilling in the AC, laying on a block of ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Laying up there talking about, let them eat cake. I mean, check on the soldiers and see if they're all right out there and properly hydrated. Right. <laughs> what else? Now we've got some local election, local runoffs coming up. And just a reminder to folks, if you check your um, Secretary of State or your voter registration or that sort of thing to see if there are any runoffs. And get out there and vote in the runoffs because people are notoriously... Um, guilty of not going back out to vote in the runoffs. They'll they'll vote mm-hmm. in the primaries, but not in the runoffs. So check and see if there are any in your area. And if there are, get out there and vote. Do your duty. And be an yeah. informed voter, please. Yes. You know, there's too much information out here about things to not know what's going on or or at least who's running, you know. And uh, on a on a kind of a different subject or note is uh, I heard something interesting talking about illegal immigration. And uh, let me let me ask you first, because it was a total surprise to me. What what group of people in America or a demographic do you think are, uh, you know, in a poll said that they were against illegal immigration? Like what, what group has the highest numbers of being against uh, people sneaking in the country? People who did it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Hispanics. Mm-hmm. Hispanics. Yeah. And, and the media and the Democrats are not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that because that, no. that goes against their agenda. And they need those potential voters. That's it. They do. They but do. It's a, it's a great way to fight against voter fraud. You know, you want to mm-hmm. you want to talk about that and somebody not being able to identify themselves in the polls. Exactly. Exactly. Or in I think in New York, going so far as to allow non-citizens to vote in local elections. I think that's mm-hmm. going up and on in New York City, if I'm not mistaken. So. Oh, they're they're trying to uh, uh, vote or decide on that if non-citizens can vote. I think non-citizens can vote. I think it passed. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. Elections. Yeah. So, so to, to pile on, you said so. There's they're getting into the country illegally. They're breaking the laws to get here. They right. make it up to New York. They settle in, and they can vote now. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, why don't what? they? Why don't they just change it so that you don't have to be born in America to run for president? Hey, you know, let's just change that criteria. Well, it's there's the Constitution. A, right. And there's a specific reason behind that. So that so that someone would not run for president uh, or come here just for that reason, because they want to take over. Right. Mm-hmm. Someone, you know, I mean, I understand if you've been here a couple of months, but someone they, they want all the rights of a citizen. They want to they want to be able to live here, but they don't want to do what they need to do. To be able to come, to be able to become a citizen, but I need to vote. I have researched and looked into the candidates and the people that are going to run for mayor or governor or president. I want to have a say in that. Yeah, it, it's so it's so bass backwards. It is, and they're demanding. That's the thing. They yeah. march down the streets demanding these things, you know, and already the the courts, the Supreme Courts said that they can get free education if they s- sneak over here, free K through 12 education, mm-hmm. if they get in and, and stay, and all of a sudden we've got to do that. And then now they've been here so long, they figure they should get residency and go to college at a reduced rate. <laughs> you know, Meanwhile, folks in other states have to pay the out-of-state tuition rate as opposed to someone who yeah. came in here illegally and is paying the the in-state tuition rate. So you're discriminating against Americans. 
So, yeah, I can understand why folks who did it the right way are mad because they're waiting in line. They're following the rules. They're doing it properly. And meanwhile, you have a political party and in some cases, Republicans, too, um, catering to folks who are breaking the law. So I can understand being upset. (laughs) But let me let me say to the listeners, to any of the people that are for immigrants coming into America. I think part of the reason why is some of the people that uh, they want immigrants to come here and want them to come here faster, they, they feel like it's taking too long or the process that they need to go through is, is taking too long, you know, five years, seven years or whatever it is. If you, if you re if you really feel that way, then push for or join an organization that pushes for the the increasing and the expansion of the uh, border patrol, uh, not the border patrol, but the immigration offices, because you can only be processed as fast as the staff can handle you. Mm-hmm. So let's get more immigration officers. Let's get more people working there. That that will create jobs. You know, if that if that's really your concern and not wanting people to get here uh, illegally and then vote and not pay taxes. Wh- why would you want somebody to not pay taxes? You want to talk about the rich paying their fair share? <laughs> wow. Look at the percentage that they pay in taxes, which is more than me, compared to an illegal immigrant. What percentage does an illegal immigrant pay in taxes? Exactly. Zero. Exactly. Which, re- which means it's really not about that. That's about wealth envy when they're criticizing the rich because of that. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Elizabeth and, and all these people, they, they know that that's, that's a, a viable solution. If they, I mean, how, why doesn't somebody have a conversation about it? Why don't the Democrats get together and it'd be a town hall meeting somewhere and either the one who's speaking or someone in the audience say, okay, how long should it take to become a citizen? What is reasonable? And then go from there. Mm-hmm. And then you add time to it or shave off time, depending on, well, first, let, let's see what the process is. If you got 10 things to go through instead of five things, of course, it's going to take a little longer. Mm-hmm. You know, in, instead of just these tunnels and turning off the lights and unlocking the back door. And I think with that, and at this point in time, folks are ready to turn off the immigration faucet completely. I mean, because, you know, the the borders overrun, folks are here illegally, they're just coming in and, and getting what they want. We don't know who's coming in. We don't have any kind of regulation of it in terms of enforcement. So I think folks are ready for it to just stop, it, just stop yeah. it cold and no more and say enough. And let's figure out what we have going on in here. But, um, you know, the administration, the Biden administration doesn't want to do that. Um, obviously, because they're not doing it. So, you know, go to the town halls and get in, I'm not saying get, get in their faces, but in a, in a polite uh-huh. way and sure. ask them what they're doing. I mean, this is low hanging fruit. This is absolutely low hanging fruit for the Congress uh-huh. people, um, something that they can run on and they could possibly win on if they actually want to do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, we'll, we'll see kind of in what happens from there, but uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, and I want to remind people that uh, 80% of the illegal immigrants that are caught at the border are not from Mexico. Right. So the Democrats are trying to tell you that Trump hates Mexicans, and that's why he wanted to build the wall. Well, he's going after the wrong group. (laughs) So, you know, that's, that's a farce. So it's about securing your border. I want... I want the Canadian border to be secure also. It's just not as many people trying to get in here. It's not as big a problem Mm -hmm. as it is on the southern border. Yes, exactly. Exactly, exactly. We need all of our borders secure and entryways, ports and entryways, because um, that needs to be secure as well. You know, we have, we're importing our problems. I mean, terrorists, criminals, and drugs, the whole nine yards, we're, we're just making it worse. I mean, if people sailed here or came here in a raft, 
in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean to the East Coast or the West Coast. And the Coast Guard saw that boat 50 miles offshore or however far it is, their, the extent of their, their jurisdiction. Would these people that want illegal immigrants to come to America, would you want people in boats to be stopped? Or do you think if, if they can sneak in, if they can sneak through, God bless them and they'd be okay? You know, when you when you mentioned all of our borders, it just made me think about the, the East Coast and the West Coast, even though we have the ocean, that's that's still border, you know? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's a lot of things that and and, and, and you know, the money printing that continues mm-hmm. to go on, the inflation, all that sort of stuff. Just, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's just a lot. You know, and there are so many issues and so many problems till you can't focus on, you know, it's hard to focus on one at a, one at a time because there's so many going on. Mm-hmm. And that's just at the federal level, you know, at the local level, you got to make sure that they're not teaching your kids to be racist or activists or that they're teaching mm-hmm. them math and science. And that's, yeah, what, right. you know, <laughs> you know, mm. which, which is a, which is another thing, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the schools or whatever are pushing STEAM, science, technology, mm-hmm. engineering, arts, and math. Well, in none of that is there civics, history. Um, you know, where 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 does where do civics and history go? Where does social studies go? You know, where does where does the I guess it would be considered traditionally liberal arts? Where mm-hmm. does that go? We're just we're just doing science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. That's it. It's like, but there's there's more than that. There is. You know, right. So. And then they're pulling the electives to the front of the line or stuff that people don't even need and then uh, putting less emphasis on what should be mandatory. Exactly. They are. They are. And, and you know, kids are coming out of school like an episode we did last week. Um, yeah. Kids are coming out of school stupid. I mean, just literally stupid. They don't have license. Literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It really is. You know, but if you're going to ask them about a celebrity or about some pride issue or some kind of, you right. know, something that doesn't matter, then they're all for that. They know all about that. They know how to get in the streets and march but don't have the critical thinking skills to understand what they're marching for, why, or any implications should anything of that, any of that come to pass. So. And those, those things about entertainers or uh, pride or Juneteenth or any of this stuff is not going to help them with any skill at a company. You know, no. it's just, e- even that is not even going to help them to you don't have to get rich but you should be able to earn a earn a good living and take care of yourself unless you're just expecting for the government to Mm. to take care of you and and give you what you need and that could be the plan (laughs) that could be the plan i want to make sure I, i do a shout out before we wrap up the show and uh uh say what's up and mention jericho green again hilarious hilarious stuff in episodes and uh one of the last ones that i heard he called aoc one of the four whores of the apocalypse oh my, goodness. <laughs> oh, my word and he talks about the ku klux trans <laughs> and you know he's got all these uh coined phrases that he created uh, jericho is hilarious wow yeah so <laughs> yeah my chest feels 10 pounds lighter. There you go. Just like letting it go. Sometimes you just got to, yeah, blow off steam. A different kind of steam than the other one. But yeah, <laughs> sometimes you got to just, whatever's on your mind, you got to get it out there. And then we we want to interact and connect with people. So remember that we have an email address, which is brutehonestradio at gmail.com. And you can also not just follow us on Twitter and Facebook, but you can comment on different things that we're posting. We put these episodes on there, but also comments and then other interesting uh, videos that we find. So uh, we want people to be engaged and involved in, in all of that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. You want to give them uh, any other information about the the podcast? Yeah, you can hear us wherever you are. We are there. So um, find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Google, iHeart, Google Podcasts, iHeart Radio, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there. And don't forget to reach out on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you're watching us on YouTube, just hit that notification button and hit the subscribe button so you'll know when a new episode Ding, 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 ding. ding. Okay. <laughs> Ring that bell, yeah. Ring that bell. <laughs> And with that, we will talk to you next time. Yeah, everybody, take care of yourself. God bless America, and we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at BruteHonestRadio at gmail.com. That's B-R-U-T, Honest Radio at gmail.com.